comic fans and welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video and it's a monday night and it is the price variants and not only have we got everybody's favorite canadian alan the comic collector geek we also have everybody's favorite alan moore lookalike gray man and we Hello. have everybody's favorite uk online store operator splat comics and today we've got a bit of a special one. We are having a uh, cover competition, a cover clash, a cover slingers um, episode. Uh, we've done these before, but we haven't done them with um, three people. Um, we did one over on Alan's channel, and I have to say the quality of the judging was excellent. And, <laughs> and, the, best per and, and the best person won. Right. That's the uh, funniest okay. thing you've said all day. I don't, no, want to give any, I don't want to give anything away about who won and who had the best covers, but, you know. Right, uh, so today, <laughs> the competition, we you need to show covers with reptiles or amphibians, and Mr. Greyman will judge us. He will give us a score after each cover, and then we'll add up the scores at the end to determine the champion. And we are going to start uh, with Alan. Oh, okay. So um, that's good in a way, because then I can sort of set the theme. Um, now, when I think of amphibians, I think of not just like, because this is comics. we got to be creative. we got to be imaginative. And this is the creature of the Black Lagoon. He's an amphibian. He basically is a man of water and land. And uh, he is like, just a, it's just a great cover. I mean, this is awesome. You know, he's coming out of the swamp. He's going to find some girl in a bikini somewhere. And um, he's got to, he's, he's on, you know, he's, he's looking for action here. So uh, this is the creature. Uh, and it's the creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay. So immediately there, you said he's a man. Um, so well, man, man, and uh, like mixture. He's not amphibian. like, he's man, an amphibian. Man, he's a mixture of okay. man and like, has this been some aquatic involved? animal? You know, have we checked to see whether he's got warm blood or cold blood? Well, I don't know. Do amphibians have warm blood, don't they? I know they're cold blooded. They're cold blooded? Or, oh, I don't know. He looks like he's cold. I don't know. He could use a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> he do, what, so, yeah, what, so, it's what's the red stuff? Is that seaweed? Yeah, that's seaweed because he's like from the swamp. So, yeah. Just, you know, he's. He looks like he's got like gill like things on the side too, if you see his mm. face. Yeah. So he's, well, you yeah, know, I think... when I was in when I was in the previous show, um, I joined that show. I thought it'd be a nice, friendly affair where we'd all be supportive <laughs> of each other. And it turned out that no, absolutely the other way. All we do is roast each other and try to devalue each other's uh, propositions. So it's my turn to devalue yours a little. <laughs> and I'm afraid. I think that your argument falls apart with the words on the cover, which says that this thing comes out of the jungle, not out of the water. I don't well, think this is amphibious well, at all. I think it's just a guy. Well, the jungles have water, right? <laughs> there are swamps. You know, some of the they're very swampy, and he's coming out of the swamp. There, there's also frogs and stuff that live in the. In the, in the uh, I see uh, no frogs. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's, like, he's an amphibian man. It's a cool. It is a cool comic, though, Alan. I will give you that. Okay, it's a great. Uh, it's a great comic. I think sometimes that kind of monster is called a manphibian, but also I believe in the original creature from the Black Lagoon, he was known as the Gill Man. And there are no reptiles yeah, gill. or amphibians that have gills, as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure gills is mainly fish, isn't it? Have gills? Yeah. Uh, but, I, I, well, he has gills, but he also breathes air right? because he does both, right? Yeah, but do amphibians or reptiles have gills? I don't no. know. I, sure think, they I do. think amphibians do have the ability to breathe both under and above water. I, I don't think they have that's, gills. That's yeah, the definition that. They don't have gills. But whether they have gills or not, it's like I think gills is how yeah, they yeah. breathe underwater. I mean, I don't want to defend yeah. the cover because it's you know no. I want to attack <laughs> the cover, but on, on this point, I think gills is okay. Yeah, I don't think amphibians have gills, as far as I know. I don't. don't I, I, I mean, think I know fish do, but but I, I my my, my thoughts of this, like when when I said it, I was thinking 
amphibians and reptiles. So I'm looking for lizards, Komodo dragons, frogs, toads, uh, what's them little cute ones, uh, azotals or whatever they're called. So for me, this is not an amphibian or a reptile. This is a... a I was hoping fossil, you'd go for more creative. Whatever. I like the cover. The art is awesome. So I'm definitely giving you full points for the art, but when the, the theme points are added in as well, I can only score that an eight. An okay. eight. Horrific. Oof. I mean, now that the point has been awarded, I would make a counter argument on your behalf, but without any mm -hmm. hope to change the score. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just oh, ignore well. the account. <laughs> oh, well. Off you go, Darren. Right. Well, you say you want a frog. I've got the only frog that matters. Is the Thor frog. Oh. <laughs> frog. Frog. Froggy. Now, this frog. is an amphibian, without doubt, because of the frog. You you wanted a frog, you got a frog. With Even the power frog, of Thor. Wielding Mani Mjolnir. <laughs> How can he wield Molnir? He's, he's smaller than Molnir. He's the most <laughs> worthy frog in the pond. <laughs> human he's got size. like a little male mirror, actually. It's really a tiny one. Maybe he's a giant frog. <laughs> And all the fish in the pond are also in peril. <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. He's going to leap onto Loki in a minute and beat him up. Yeah. He does say six foot six frog, doesn't it, on the on the cover? Yeah, six foot six frog, yeah. yeah. What do you, what call, do you call a six, six foot six, six fighting frog? mad frog? You got it. That's definitely it. Any other critiques before I give a score for it? Uh, let's have a look at it again. I mean, it's so far a frog, so, you know, um, it's definitely... It is a, a frog. Yeah, so it's, yeah. there's no argument about it being an amphibian or not. Um, I don't think it's the best art I've ever seen on a comic. Well, I didn't mm. draw it, so I don't mind you criticising the art, but Mr Simonson <laughs> might. <laughs> and also, yeah, I think... I've got a few... Okay, I'm... Oh, Gray. And I'll say I've got a few things to consider about that. The concept of it, like four being turned into a frog, is a bit, is a bit silly. So I like, hmm. But then also, Darren sent me a copy of that in the in the low grade comic system the other day. So that, that goes into his favour that he actually sent me a copy of that. And also, <laughs> I, I, I meant to mention this earlier on. Earlier on in the in Alan's stream, everyone was trying to butter me up with like compliments, but I don't I don't listen to that. I just carry on. And, but, but when they insult me, that when it's when it goes against them, I remember that Alan saying rude things about me after I scored a couple of his comic <laughs> books. So I'm gonna have to remember to bear that in mind. Oh, no, I can't remember oh, no. Darren, what... Yeah, I'm gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna give this one an eight as well. An eight. Oh. The oh, okay. the theme. It wow. matches the theme better, but. <laughs> The art's not great, and it's a bit silly. A uh, ball turned into a frog. It was a dark day in Marvel Comics when that was passed by the editor. That's all I can say. Right. What I'm going to show oh. you next is one of my favourite covers. Um, it's actually by Luis Dominguez, and it is from The Phantom Stranger. And it has a fantastic peril cover. So this could have been used for peril or uh, reptiles. Snakes are reptiles. Oh, isn't yeah. that a snake? Yes, it's a reptile. A snake. Oh, okay, reptile. yeah, reptile. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Why am I thinking? I'm thinking the wrong type of reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> that snakes, is snakes a... are reptiles, uh, and there we yeah. go. I could have used this for either category. I could have used this for yeah. peril, or I could have used it for um, reptiles and amphibians. So there we are. I think it's cool. great. I just love this. Luis Dominguez, very underrated, gets overseen, overlooked by sort of Neil Adams and Bernie Wrights and and Nick Cardi, but I think he's produced some absolute cracker, cracker covers. Doesn't hit all the time, but with this Phantom Stranger, I think he was on the mark. Right. Let's go to critiques from the other contestants. Anyone want to critique that before I give my score? Well, um, it's, it does hit the it does hit the category, I think. Um, hit yeah. the category. It's, Girls, it's I tricky like any cover with a girl on it. Triggered a phone okay, call. I'm going to throw him onto your mercy or otherwise, Gray, I think. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, my mercy with this comic book, right? Mark's probably got some inside knowledge. He knows that I've got a full Phantom Stranger run, and I love every single cover in the whole of that Phantom Stranger run. I think we were talking about it at the Mark just yesterday. And um, I have I can't fault the art. I can't fault the fact that it 100% represents the reptile theme. So that's a 10. Thank you. Whoa! 
Oh, we should have worked harder, Alan, at disparaging yeah. the, the man. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of okay. criticism from you. What could you have criticised that for? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was don't know. All I would say is it's very early days to award a 10 because you don't know what goodness is coming next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is it my turn to battle that? Yeah. Well, fortunately, I, I, I'm, I'm doing a quick switch out so you guys didn't see the other one. <laughs> because I didn't even, I, I, when you said snakes, I was like, oh my goodness, why didn't I think of this awesome cover that I have that has a really great snake on it? And it's <laughs> Abbott and Costello. Oh, that's a good, I like that. <laughs> okay, so we got the snake and it's wrapped around, uh, uh, Lou. is it Abbott? Is it Lou Abbott? Costello? Is it Lou Costello, it's Costello, Lou, right? And, no, it's Bud Abbott. He, it's Bud Abbott, yeah. But yeah, no, no, you're right. No, it is Costello. It's Costello. That's Costello. And he's like licking his, the snake is licking his ear. And he's like, oh, not now, honey. Uh, <laughs> Abbott is watching. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. it's a, you know, it's a really cute snake. And, you know, it's, it meets the theme. Bit of humor. Bit of sexy girl. So what, right. what Any critiques? Well, Any so, critiques? Um, I'll just, for clarification, Alan, um, mm -hmm. Does he think it's the snake kissing him, or does he think it's the woman <laughs> kissing him? <laughs> does his thinking make it real or not real? Is that how it works in in your logic here? Well, I'm just it's, wondering it's... whether we're we're voting on a bestiality cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's certainly not in peril. <laughs> it's not. Well, he could be. He may Actually, well be he in, peril. Like he is in peril. <laughs> uh, so it depends what kind of peril. <laughs> yeah. And actually, it's shocking so much that his hat, his friend's hat, is like <laughs> blown right off his head. <laughs> it's a very colourful snake. I'm not sure if a snake ever existed with that kind of patterning, but it is good. Look, it is funny. Mm. I thought it was a cute snake. Is everyone's critiques in. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to score that. Right, hundred percent on theme. Uh, funny. Cool old school art as well. I like the trade dress of the wonky and even. That's a nice little touch. I love the colourful snake, even though I don't think those are real snake markings. <laughs> and I do like a bit of uh, Abbott and Costello. So that is a 10. Oh, wow. Thank you. Impressive. I like that one as well, Alan. <laughs> okay, cool. Whew. Right. Uh, where have we got to? Yeah, it's Darren, I think. Darren, Darren, oh. Darren your second one. I'm next to the the altar of sacrifice, am I? <laughs> 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 oh, well, unfortunately, I mean, I'm not feeling too good about this next cover because one of the comments Gray made about the last one was it was silly. Well, if you thought that was silly, then we're about to go ridiculous. <laughs> I, would, I would say that for, for as a frog was silly, but if you look at the Bud Adam and Costello, that was silly as well, but it was good, silly in a good way because they're silly characters and it was made sense on their comic. Whereas, uh, if you see what I mean. Yeah, Thor, <laughs> yeah. Thor, sure isn't known ever... as a, Thor isn't well known as a silly comic. I'm not sure I can ever see <laughs> what you mean, Gray, but never mind. <laughs> it comes <laughs> to silliness, and the silliness includes multiple frogs and one and a half oh, crocodiles. A yeah, Gru is very silly. <laughs> but it's also, <laughs> it's also very, very great. And cool and wonderful. Mm. But does no, anyone want to critique that? Yeah, let me have a look. I'm a Groove fan, so it's going to be difficult. And I've got that comic. Let's have a look at it again. We have five blue frogs down at the bottom. Yeah. And there's a whole a whole reptile, Those are, crocodile yeah. or alligator yeah. underneath Groove. And then there's a tail of one running away as well. You've also got a few sort of antelope and birds thrown in and even rough over the Those dog. maybe? There's a whole menagerie. Yeah, mm. it, that's a, actually a pretty great amphibian cover. I can't, I can't complain about it. It's not, not bad. Well, I'm, like struggling to, I'm struggling to critique it because it's definitely missed the theme, and I love uh, Sergio Aragones and Gru, so I'm afraid I can't do any proper critiquing without being hypocritical. All right, then. So cut into the chase. Alan can't critique it. Mark can't critique it. So um, it makes three out of three can't critique it. That's a 10 as well. My God, it's a wonder. Mm. Thank you so much. Right. Um, 
Okay. I don't have any problems with those last two tens you give them to my competitors, Gray, because I would have probably given them tens as well. Okay, here we go. This is from Beyond the Unknown, number one, and it is Fantastic Turtle Men of Space. So, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> turtles are uh, amphibians. That is a giant oh. turtle men of space. I don't know if a turtle's an amphibian. It is. I checked it's it off. No, it's a reptile, isn't it? Reptile, sorry. It's a reptile. Yeah, amphibian. You know, the turtles are reptiles. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You, you got it wrong. There's a case of reptile dysfunction there. Repti a reptile <laughs> dysfunction. So not only have you got a giant turtle, um, you've also got... Try and hold it out of the glare. Get a bit of glare on it. I'm not getting the full glory of it. Get it out of the bag for you. Yeah, Turtle Man of Space. What a great cover. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. But if they're in space, are they breathing air or just well, space? I don't know. It's... <laughs> Say something, Mark, so you come up on the screen for me. Hello. There we go. There you go. There okay. you go. I mean, I'll, I'll, I tell oh, you no. what, it, it's not a whole turtle. It's more of a turtle's head, and doesn't that have a different meaning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we saw a whole snake either on about Abbott and Costello. Uh, we didn't see a whole <laughs> crocodile on Gru, but I don't think we had... Says you have to see a whole one. It's so giant you couldn't. Is possibly... that is that like a real turtle? Because like they're coming out no, of the it's, turtle's back. It's mechanical. It's like There's a mechanical turtle. Out of it. It's not a mechanical turtle. It's a it's robot. A turtle. It's got. It's better... a robot. It's not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a robot, they'd say they they'd call it fantastic robot robot turtle men. But he doesn't. If that if that went underwater, it would rust. <laughs> 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 um, but turtles do not have hatches in their shells for people to come out of. Not, it's not in hatches. That within its <laughs> um, shell crevices. <laughs> crevices. <laughs> We're back to turtle's head again. Are you guys finished critiquing? <laughs> I yeah. think we can go on I'm all day sure around that real one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can you speak again, Mark? I keep every time yeah, I, I try and get okay. a good look. Oh, well, you're asking the others to critique. So I didn't think it was really. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's like it's, so, it's such a cool cover that I would like to. I'm looking at the hatches. They've been talking about hatches and yeah, saying no it's a hatches. robot. They're so I want to see what I think the, of that. Sitting on the shell of the uh, turtle. Yeah. Well, who knows? If it's a space turtle, they might be able to get access to its shell. You know, that maybe they've got hatches that they've built into it. You know, it's a it's a space turtle for God's sake. Um, right. Now I've got to say on this one. Right. I love the fact that it's a different kind of reptile. You you get loads of alligators and snakes and stuff, but to see an actual turtle blinking guy, plus it's from Beyond the Unknown, which I'm trying to get a full run of. So I already love all the covers on this one. The tank's getting exploded. There's loads of soldiers. There's guys popping out of the back. There's a spaceship. I just that's, that's So for me, that is another surefire 10. Thank you. Whoa, a 10 for a rusty old space robot. Wow. It's not a really <laughs> robot. <laughs> if it looks like a turtle and wobbles like a turtle and there's a shell a like a turtle, Joe Kubert. A turtle. That is a Joe Kubert cover as well. <laughs> is it really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I didn't recognise that. Yeah, probably the easiest way, because he's very good at war covers, so it would have been the yeah, tank that's the tank. quite Joe Kubert. Yeah. Look at that hatch. Look at that hatch with the guy. He's on like a... It is it, like on a raised platform and he's firing some kind yeah. of like machine gun. And that would be a retractable hatch. Now that would have to retract at least the full height of the Look, turtle. Have you not got any turtles <laughs> in your garden with retractable <laughs> machine guns on the top of them? <laughs> if, you've, got, you've got to consider the technology from these <laughs> from these turtle men from space. They maybe have the technology to, to do that with giant turtles. You just don't know, you, you know. It's just, you just can't tell. Yeah, go out and look out your window at the River Trent, and I'm sure you'll yeah. find a turtle with a submachine gun mounted on its back. Th these there's, are not there's many, <laughs> There'd be many turtles' heads floating along the River Trent, knowing the way that the sewage <laughs> is disposed of in the UK, Wait. but no turtles. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Last round. Last round. Last round. Okay, so I have two books that I can choose from. For this round and how do you feel about alien amphibians or uh dinosaurs i'm gonna let the judge choose which book i show <laughs> no i can't do that 
So uh, um, yeah, Matilda always says no, but I don't. I don't I'm easy. I mean, uh, whatever's in your left hand. Whatever's in my left hand. Okay, so you're leave going it in with... the trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, so this is an alien amphibian. You got he's got the like sort of like uh frog eyes. He's got frog eyes. He's got the frog tongue, but he's got a whole bunch of like like tentacly arms. Mm. And he's going after the girl Slave and the she's Hydra. Wearing... Yeah. And he's going after a girl with the, the bubble helmet, and there's a guy with the bubble helmet. I don't know why though. In in um the golden age, the women always just wear a bubble helmet. They have like <laughs> they like show lots of leg, and I don't know yeah. how much protection that would be, but but uh, definitely uh, a cool amphibian monster coming out of the water. It looks like it could be a mixture of a reptile and an amphibian. Could be. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. It's like well, it's a hydra. The teeth, the teeth for the a hydra. reptile. Yeah, I don't think amphibians have teeth. I'm not too sure, but I know reptiles do, obviously. It does look like a well, mixture like of the it. two with a bit of octopus thrown in, to be honest. Which yeah, is, octopus. Uh, yeah. that? octopus is not a uh, reptile, it's a cephalopod. <laughs> well, he's definitely got the tongue of a reptile, and then he has like the eyes of a frog. Of a cat. The yeah. eyes of a cat. <laughs> no, those are yeah. frog eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to say, my idea of a hydra is that a hydra is a multi headed. Uh, Sort of mythical mm. creature. Yeah, I don't know why they yeah, call like it a hydra, dragon. That's what they more said. like a dragon than a frog. But but a hydra would be in a, a lizard, right? So that fits the theme too. Uh, so either way, it is it like? Yeah, yeah, mm. mainly. So you had your what alien is, turtle. It's, this it's is sort, alien of, it's sort of amphibian frog thing. adjacent. Mm. <laughs> well, it's a, it's you said lizards and amphibians, so this is one of the two or both. Yeah, your your this your, is the only your... one that meets both of the requirements. <laughs> your contention <laughs> is that it's a mixture of both. I I accept the, the contention to a certain level, but if, is everyone finished with their critiques? Yeah, I've got to say that yeah. it's a beautiful cover, great art. Love the art. Love the I love the theme of what's going on on the cover, but. I can't hold with that bit. I mean, it may have parts of rep and reptile in it. It may have parts of amphibian in it. But overall, it's just a, an alien creature of some sort. So I don't think it really... It's a great cover, but I don't think it really goes with does the theme uh, proper justice. I'll give it an extra couple of points because it's so so good. Like, but on theme points, it's not got... You know, there's not enough of being a proper amphibian or being a proper reptile, but it's so cool that I'm going to give it a couple extra points that I would have given it because I'm going to give it an eight. Oof. Oof. Very fair. Very fair. Harsh, yeah. You should have said the harsh. right hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the great composition and the great art gave it a couple of extra points, to extra that the theme missed out on, basically. Hmm. Okay. Well, I liked so... it. <laughs> okay, I liked well, thank it. You. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> thank but, you, Darren. I've got to be, I've got to judge. I think the theme. Get, Dar the next theme time, is, Darren is, is the judge. I think it's the only oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> now we would have some fun if I was judging. <laughs> <laughs> is it me? It is. Yes, yep. mate. Yeah. Now, I regret from the bottom of my heart after getting a six in the last part of our battle in the first half of this monster mammoth that you've had this comic should have been in the first half but it fits into this half too you'll see immediately why all the people in terror on the boat there we got multiple crocs and a man thing so the peril was amazing why did i choose to put it in this one and not the other i don't know but there you go have at it right I think Roger showed this on Cover Slingers last week on Slingers Choice. I think he went with reptiles, actually, or, or crocodiles. Yeah. As the crocodilians he went with, didn't he? So, yeah, a bit so I'm going for lack of originality. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> lack of originality. <laughs> he's, just, he's just copying Metarog. <laughs> um, what do they say about imitation is the best form of flattery? I know, but it was Metarog, not Grey. <laughs> yeah. Any critiques great from you, Aaron? Compliments. <laughs> I, I think it's great, actually. It's got three crocodiles. It's got a girl in peril, too. The girl, what is she doing? I, I'm not quite sure what she's doing. It looks like she has a girl in her arms. Yeah, she yeah, may so have already pegged it. Yeah. The one in her arms. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but man. And then you got man thing. Them. I'm not sure what man thing is. So I don't know man thing. Uh, well, you know what man? Yeah, but you know what? Peril was the the first half of the battle, and this one's about reptiles. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But you at least the you got the three reptiles. I mean, on theme, mm. you're on theme, mate. You're on theme. Yeah. I don't think those those people in the flaming uh, craft are going to be saved by Man Thing because Man Thing burns people who know fear. So they know fear. They're about to be eaten by alligators. They're on a burning helicopter. So the Man Thing's going to grab all of them and kill them all with his with his acid touch. So they were definitely in peril. <laughs> but that's not the theme this this week. So are we uh, able to reptiles. use this on the uh, on the first part and we can go and redo the scores? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, one show at a time. We can't retroactively add scores from other shows. That would be that way. Like, that way lies madness. Let's that just way, go show that way leads to multiverses, which is not good. Exactly. In, yeah, in a Universe, you won every show, mate. But in this universe, <laughs> multi put up with what score I give you. But that's right. I love the trade dress. I love the action going on there. The the, the art is great. I'm not sure who it is, Plug or someone. I don't know. But uh, alligators definitely match the theme. The people in peril, like they say, the woman holding the little girl, the flames looking up behind them. That is a great action comic. It's got great reptiles on it. It's got everything that I think it needs. And uh, I'm gonna give that a ten as well. Woohoo! Oh, wow. You're on a roll, Darren. Wow. Right. My final comic is a weird mystery. And um, <laughs> we have a crocodile. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the character is saying, Where are you, Mr. Essen? It's time for dinner. Mr. Essen appears to <laughs> into a crocodile. <laughs> oh, gosh. Or does he just dress his uh, crocodile in clothing well, and saying... Yeah, he could have done, yeah, but it's still a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any critiques on that one? Well, I just if think it's, it's a man picture. that's been turned into a crocodile, then he's not actually an amphibian. He's a man that's been turned into a crocodile. Based on <laughs> some of the logic that I've been hearing tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely a crocodile. It, anyway, that's the, that's the hate crime, uh, Alan, because... <laughs> This this person identifies as a crocodile, and it's very it's a hate oh, crime. No. It's a hate <laughs> crime to call him a man when he wants to be identified as a well, crocodile. Maybe, maybe he identifies <laughs> as a man. Maybe he identifies no, as a man. He he's actually no, a he definitely. That's why he's wearing happy. clothing. He looks quite happy. It could, to be. it could be it could be a crocodile who identifies as a man. In which case, then he's is not it a reptile at all. No, I don't but, know. Yeah, he's a man. I, I agree you, with you, I agree with Mark on this one. It is a man. You've actually thrown some shade on that cover, uh, Mark, when you're trying to defend it. You've now got me thinking about how does that crocodile identify? Because if it identifies as a man and it's called Mr. Ison, then yeah. by look, I, all, logic... all I have to all, just what does he look like <laughs> a man or a crocodile? Hey, it looks like a Looks like a dog it, wagging his I mean, tail like that. Sorry, when we, when we saw, when we saw, hang on a minute. When we saw the croc, when we saw the alligators on the last cover, we didn't have a discussion about whether those <laughs> alligators thought they were identified as men, did we? I know, but you just brought it up, and that's, that's what's that's what's caused it. We had you you there, brought yeah. it up, and he is wearing clothing, so he must identify as a man. I don't know. I I don't no, want to misidentify that that poor man. No, he's, he's well. Like, you know what. He's There's a... transformed into a crocodile. Those are the remnants. So those are his, those. That's his sort of previous shell. Yeah. There's a famous okay, saying I don't produce... know who made it, and I'm not going to be able to quote it right, but it goes something like, "When your adversaries are in the middle of making a mistake, don't interrupt them." So I'll just let you carry on, Mark. You're doing a great job of defeating your own cover. <laughs> anyway, right, so I... yeah. I'll okay, no one else got anything to say. So I'm going to say, right, all joking aside, and uh, despite him almost tempting me to drop points off over this uh, whole, you know, is it Trojan's cat kind of argument, is it not, or is it, I don't know, whatever, I'm still going to give that a 10 because it's a great <laughs> cover. And it's definitely... It's it's a cute a, cover. A, a, I, I it like looks, cover. It looks like a crocodile. <laughs> whatever it identifies as itself personally, it still looks like a reptile. And so... You know, what's not to like about that cover? It's got some humour in it as well. I like the fact that he's, you know, the guy's thinking he's a, a man. He walks out as a crocodile in pyjamas or whatever it is. So I just think that's a great cover. <laughs> it's another one I need for my collection. Gosh darn it. <laughs> mm. So at the end of the... That's, score, the, that's the round. Yep. 
in third place is Alan with 26 points. Oh, no. 26 points on the last show as well, actually. Uh, second place, Splat Comics with 28 points, but with a perfect score, possibly the first time ever, on, at least on the on the price variance. We've got 30 points, three perfect tens for Mark. Wow. And, and so how much did he pay the judge? Round of applause. <laughs> so that's, um, <laughs> I think that's a significant win. Two, two out of two. <laughs> Wow, that's your really a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, I he, pick comics that I know. I mean, Grey can't resist these type of... I mean, they are great comics. I mean, you know... That's yeah, great. You know, the, uh, that is an impossible one to critique against on that. Yeah. Comic, you know, I, don't, I couldn't critique any of them. I love every single one of them. The art's great on every one of them. The subject is great and in different ways for every one of them, you know? Just crazy sci-fi from the uh, the turtle... <laughs> right, good. guys, that is the end of the show today. I'm delighted with this. Two out of two. Um, Grey Man wow. will definitely be invited back as a judge. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, that is your lot. See you again soon. Bye. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>